Hello people, welcome to Gurukla. I am Jai. So today in this video we are going to see about the access control mechanism in data link layer and specifically we are going to talk about the control access methods. So we will see what exactly control access methods in this video. Now without any further delay let's get into the topic. So whereas in our previous videos we were talking about the access control mechanisms that is incorporated in the data link layer. So today this video is all about the controlled access protocol and whereas in our previous videos we have completely discussed about the various random access protocols such as ALOHA, CSMACA, CSMACD and CSMA uh, different uh, approaches for CSMA. So all these techniques were discussed in the previous videos and whereas this video we will be covering uh, a special type of access control mechanism and that's what we call it as controlled access protocols. So whereas in controlled access protocol we have three variants of access control one is reservation type of access control polling type of access control and token passing type of access control so all these types of access controls are really very simple to understand and we will try to understand each of this access control mechanism with an real time example so first of all we will talk with what reservation is so as like the word depicts, we will be making an reservations. So in order to make an better understanding of this access mechanism, we can correlate this method which is very similar to a passenger reserving a seat in bus or train to travel from one place to another place. So similarly what we do when we want to travel from one point to another point or from one place to another place, we will be reserving our seats on a flight or train or bus or whatever it may be. The same principle will be applied over here for a station who wants to transmit a frame. So here the reservation method, a station needs to make a reservation before sending any data. So it is time is divided into several intervals and in each interval a reservation frame precedes the data frame. So when you look at the image it will be very clear. So as you can see over here this frame is what we call it as the reservation frame. So whenever a station wants to send a data then it has to reserve a particular slot in this reservation frame. As you can see station 1, station 3 and station 4 has reserved a slot to transmit a frame and followed by the reservation frame you have the data frame over here and this data frame only the stations those who have reserved in this reservation frame is allowed to send and receive the data. As you can see station 1, station 3 and station 4 is alone sending their frames in the respective time slot and the second time slot begins whereas in the second time slot only station 1 has reserved in the slot so only station 1 is allowed to send the frame. So this type of access mechanism is what we call it as the reservation type of access mechanism and whereas in the second method of access mechanism we call it as polling and this method of polling is very similar to master slave concept. So uh, there will be a master and then all the clients will be acting as a slave. So here polling works within the topologies which, ha which is having one device as a primary device and all other remaining devices will be treated as a secondary devices. So all the data exchanges must be made only through the primary device. So when you look at the figure it will be very clear that this is the first case when a primary device looking at here this is the primary device when primary device wants to send any frame or any data to any of its slave here A and B or what we call it as the clients or the slave. So if primary wants to send the data to uh, either A or B first of all the primary will send a special type of signal we call that as select signal SEL that represents select signal which represents the primary will be first of all selecting to whom the primary wants to send the data. So once after receiving the select signal the station B will be sending an acknowledgement and once after receiving the acknowledgement the primary station will be initiating the data transfer and all the data will be acknowledged individually by the receiving station. So this is what the case when primary wants to send a data to any of its client or any of its slave. 
Now we will see the second case. What if any of the clients wants to transmit the message to the primary or to the other nodes? So here there will be a different signal that will be exchanged, whereas primary will be giving a chance to each and every slave present in the network or in other words a primary station will give a chance to all other remaining stations in the network that is connected and that chance is what we call it as the polling signal. So first of all here in our example is concerned we can see that the primary is passing a poll signal to station A and here station A does not have any data to transmit that is why station A is rejecting the poll or rejecting the chance by sending a negative acknowledgement NAK. On receiving this negative acknowledgement from station A, the primary station will pass on the poll to the next stations. As you can see over here, the poll signal is being given to station B here. So station B, if it has any data, then the data transfer can happen and then the data will be acknowledged by the primary. Say for an example, even the same scenario happens when B wants to send its data to A also. So B cannot directly send its data to A, B will have to send its data to primary and primary will in turn forward the data to A. So that is how the access mechanism will work as far as polling is concerned. So this is what we call it as polling method of access control. And the last method of access control here is token passing. So this token passing is almost similar to passing a mic among the audience attending a seminar. So what will be the situation? The mic will be circulating among the audience continuously and if at all a person has to raise any question, he should wait until the mic should reach him. So once he finished asking the questions when the mic is with him and then he can pass the mic to the another person. So this mic will be keep on rotating with the audience itself. Whenever an audience or any particular audience has to raise a question, he or she can raise a question only when the mic comes to that particular participant. So the same way the token passing mechanism will apply on the network as well. So in token passing method, the station in a network are organized in a logical ring topological fashion. Or in other words, for each station there is a predecessor or a successor. Whenever we connect it in a ring type fashion, we will always have a next node and then the previous node. The current station is the one that is accessing the channel and then the right to this access has been passed from predecessor to the current station. So this right will be passed to the successor when the current station has no more data to send. It is as simple as that. When you look into the picture, it will be very clear for you that how token passing is actually working. As you can see, station 1, station 2, station 3 and station 4 are connected in a ring type fashion like this. So first of all, let us assume that the token is present with the station 1. So station 1 can able to send and receive the frame for a particular time period. And once station 1 is completed the transferring of frames, then this token will be passed on to the second station. And the second station can now able to send and receive the frames. Once station, do, station 2 has done the data transmission, it will pass on the token to station 4. And likewise, the token will be keep on shuffling between all the devices that is connected in a logical ring fashion. And whereas we may have multiple topologies like this and figure B represents the dual ring topology and C diagram represents the bus ring topology even here even though the systems are connected in bus type fashion the token will be passed in a ring type fashion. So here the dotted line represents the direction of token passing from one node to another node and even the same concepts applies in the star topology as well. So here as you can see that station A is connected to a hub, so station 2 is also connected to a hub, 3 is also connected to a hub, 4 is also connected to a hub. So if first of all the token will be assigned to the first station and once this particular station has completed the data transfer the token will be returned to the hub itself and then the hub will give the token to the next station that is 2. Now station 2 is having the token so station 2 can able to send and receive the frame likewise it goes on. So this principle is what we call it as token passing method of access control. 
So, just to sum up what we have seen in this particular session, we were talking about a particular method of access control that is what we call it as controlled access mechanism which in turn follows a systematic approach. So, there are three types of approaches we have seen in this particular video out of which the first one is the reservation type of access control whereas uh, it is very similar to reserving a seat in a bus. So, before actual frame of data starts, you will have a reservation frame slot where each and every station has to reserve a particular slot on that reservation frame. And the second technique is polling method of access control, whereas here it is as similar to master slave concept, whereas all the data transactions will be happening only through the primary station. So, we will be using two types of signals over here. The first one is pole signal and the second one is select signal. Second one is select signal. So, here we will be using the pole and then here you will be using SEL signal. So, by based on these two signals, the master and slave can able to communicate. And whereas the third method of access method is what we call it as token passing method, which is very similar to passing a mic within the uh, audience present in a seminar. So, whomsoever has a mic can able to raise their questions. So, similarly, a token will be keep on passing between the number of stations connected on a network. So, whichever the station that has a token can able to transmit the messages. And then once the token has passed, that particular station has to wait until the token comes back to it. So, that is what we call it as token passing mechanism. So, all these three mechanisms comes under a category called controlled access methods. So, I am stopping my video here for this particular topic and then I am going to see you in the next video. Until then, it is bye from Jai and happy learning.